Hello everyone, this is Wes James again here bringing you my second Final Cut Pro tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to create our own motion backgrounds in Final Cut Pro using generators and video filters. And then we're going to animate some video clips in an angled film strip pattern across the background, you know, to, to complement it. So here's an example of what we're going to be doing today. I'm here in Final Cut Pro, and the first thing we need to do is create our motion background. So in order to do that, we're going to go to our viewer, go down to the Generators tab, left-click it, scroll down to Render, and go to Cellular. I found that in After Effects, whenever people want to create you know, motion backgrounds and such, they, they tend to use fractal noise. In Final Cut, I found as well that you know the Cellular generator seems to be your best friend when you want to create motion backgrounds. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the Duration type in 9.9 period 1 0 and that'll give us a duration of 9, 9 seconds 10 frames. Next thing you want to do is click and drag it over to the canvas window, go on to overwrite but before you let go hold down option and command and then let go of the mouse button. Instantly the generator is placed into our timeline but instantly we also have the option of knowing what go into our controls tab immediately. So Next thing we're going to do is we have the gradient and the controls tab. We can just click over there. So for me, for the example I showed you earlier, I chose to go with a light green and keep the black. So in order to do that, all I have to do is right click on the white stop here. And this brings up the color palette. You choose whatever color. Like I said before, I'm going to go with a light blue. I thought that would look really cool. And just hit the, hit the left, left mouse button to choose it. So now we have a cellular gradient color of black and light blue. So the next thing we need to do is start adding some filters. So, you know, let's click over to the Filters tab. Next thing you're going to do is go to your Effects Browser, go to Video Filters, scroll down to Distort, and choose Stripes. All right, so Stripes, the Stripes filter is distorted. It gave it more of a line-like look. So the next thing we're going to do is change the angle parameter from 0 degrees to 45. So now, now as it plays, it's coming in at a 45 degree angle with nothing but lines. The next filter we're going to need <clears throat> is going to be a glow filter, which is a bloom filter. So go back to your effects browser, go down to glow, choose bloom, and apply it to the generator. All right, so now we've applied a bloom filter. It looks like it hasn't done much yet, but just wait a second, you know. So the thing that we need to change, the parameter we need to change here is the threshold. I'm going to change that to 34 to bring it out more. So it brightens, it brightens up the uh, lines, the light blue lines a bit, and brightens up the overall generator and gives it like a glow feel to it. So the next filter we're going to need is the insect eye, and that can be found in the distort folder. So we scroll down here in the effects browser, choose insect eye, apply to our generator, and there you go. So right now we have ourselves a motion background. And the parameter that we're going to need to change next is the refraction parameter. Right now it's at 2, so you're going to change it from 2 to 2.34. And it brings up more of the insect eyes and overall looks slightly cooler. So right now we got our motion background, as you can see. And if we uh, preview it here in the viewer window, this is what it looks like. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, as you saw in the example, is we're going to need some video clips. For the demo, for the example I showed you guys, I used uh, eight SD clips, but this effect works on HD clips as well. So I have six clips just sitting in the timeline right now, just off to the side, and I'm going to select them all, drag them to the end point of the generator. And as you can see, they're all superimposed on each other, taking up each of their own individual tracks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the first clip on the we're going to select the first clip and the cellular generator. And hit the keyboard shortcut control S to solo those two so they're the only things visible. Next, we're going to go to our effects browser, scroll down to perspective, and select basic 3D. Double click the clip to bring it into the viewer, go to the filters tab, and we have the basic 3D filter applied. So the parameter that we need to change here, the parameters that we need to change here are the y axis rotation and the scale. So we're going to change the y axis rotation 
from zero degrees to 30 degrees. And we're going to bring down the scale to 40. All right, so the next thing we need to do is also position it in the frame accordingly. So before we do that, we need to set some keyframes. So go to the center parameter, you see the diamond, insert a keyframe on the in point of the clip, sh uh, hit the keyboard shortcut Shift O to go to the out point, and set a second keyframe. Now to go back to the first keyframe, hit the keyboard shortcut Option K to go back, and enter these values for the Y and X position, negative 197 for the X position, and negative 400 for the Y position. So it's completely off screen. Now let's go to the second keyframe, hit the keyboard shortcut Shift K, and enter these values for the X and Y, negative 197, and positive 500. So as you can see, the clip animates from, top to top of the, from the top to the bottom of the screen accordingly. mistake only went to 50 so 500 so it completely animates off so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to enable the second video clip so select it hit the keyboard shortcut control b this enables it we're going to right click the first clip go to copy select the second clip and hit the keyboard shortcut option v to paste attributes select filters and hit ok so now both clips have the same attributes of the basic 3d filter but we need to make a little change so we're going to double click the second clip and bring it to the viewer. And here's the change we're going to make. Change the Y axis rotation to negative 30 degrees. Leave the scale the way it is, but we're going to change the first and second keyframe values. Change this, the X position from negative 197 to positive 197. Hit the keyboard shortcut Shift K to go to the second keyframe and change the X value again to positive 197. So now, as you see these two clips animate, they're both on each side of the. They're both on each side of the overall canvas and the viewer, and they're both animating from up in the, from the top of the frame to the bottom of the frame. So now, here comes the fun part. To repeat to repeat all this work, you know, it'd be very tedious to have to reapply the basic 3D filter over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to save some time by enabling the other clips and just copying and pasting attributes. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to select the unenabled clips, clips three through six. We hit the keyboard shortcut Control B to enable them. Select Clip One, right click, copy. Select the third and fifth clip. Hit the keyboard shortcut Option V to paste attributes. Select Filters and hit OK. So now the third and fifth clip have the attributes of the first clip, and they animate the same way as well. So select the second clip now. Right click, select Copy. Select the fourth and sixth clip. Hit Option V. Select filters and hit OK. So now all these clips are animating accordingly up and down. But the only the only problem that we're running into right now is that only the fourth, only the third, actually only the fifth and sixth clips are the only ones that are visible. So what we need to do in order to get the animation you saw in the example is to offset them. So in order to do that, we're going to select all the clips on the uh, and we're going to type in this value of plus thirty. This moves the animation 30 frames ahead. We're going to deselect the first clip by holding down the command key and, and left clicking on the mouse. We're going to press plus 30 again to move them 30 frames. Deselect the second clip. We're going to hit plus 30 again. So just keep uh, deselecting clip in the order that the, you see me doing it and hitting plus 30 to move everything 30 frames ahead. All right, deselect. So there. So now we have all the clips animating staggeredly, so every clip gets their own time in the spotlight. So what I did for the animation is, you know, I had the overall animation start 10 frames after the endpoint of the cellular generator. So if you select all six clips, select, so first thing I'm gonna do is plus, hit plus 10, move the playhead 10 frames, select all six clips, move them all like so, and now, all the clips are, all the animation starts at 10 frames after the endpoint of the cellular generator. All right, so the next thing we're gonna need to do, we're gonna need to add a drop shadow to our clips to bring the effect overall all together. So double click the first clip, bring it into the viewer, go to your motion tab, click on drop shadow, click on the disclosure triangle to bring up the options, change the offset to four, 
Leave the angle at 135, change the softness to 58, and the opacity to 43. Now, for the example I showed you guys, I had a uh, light green drop shadow on mine, but you know, for you know, you guys can choose whatever color you want. It doesn't really matter. You know, whatever is your personal preference. So I chose light green. So if we scroll up, you know, the color wheel, choose light green, hit OK. So now our first clip has a drop shadow of a light green with a softness of 58 and an opacity of 43, so it gives you kind of a streaky feel to it. So in order to apply this drop shadow to the remaining clips, all we have to do is right-click, select copy, drag, lasso all the remaining clips, hit the keyboard shortcut option V to paste attributes, click on drop shadow, and hit OK. So now all our clips have the drop shadow attribute applied to it, and you know all we have to do now is just render. So you know I'm going to render. Um, if your machine's faster than mine, and that's cool. If it's not, you know it takes a little time, but you know we'll come back in just a second. All right, we're back after rendering the six clips in the generator. So we're going to move the play to the beginning of the clip. Press uh, spacebar or L to play forward, and this is what we get. All right, so like I said in the last tutorial, you can use this for end credits, demo reels, music videos, what have you, and it's a very interesting effect, you know, and I like the fact that, you know, I've learned how to create stuff using not only third-party plugins, but also using the native plugins within Final Cut, so, you know, for my next tutorials, hopefully I'll introduce some third-party plugins you guys may or may not have heard of and show you cool, interesting ways how to use those in your projects so you can enhance them and bring much more creativity and professionalism to them. So um, I've left some links to some resources that have helped me over the last few years learn how to get much more efficient and faster in Final Cut Pro. So I'll provide those links at the bottom of the video. You guys can check them out, you know, use them to your heart's content. And uh, for my next tutorial, I'm not quite sure what I want to show you guys next, but uh, leave me a comment, you know, and I'll see if I can create that. But I have some ideas in mind, like a putting people in cards and doing a card flip animation or uh, doing a home improvement effect where you take a freeze frame of a clip and you piece it all together using a combination of Photoshop and push transitions to uh, animate the effect. And it looks quite interesting. I used it in um, a video I did earlier, a Fantasia Barino video I did, at, where she appeared at a club in downtown Chicago, and it looked pretty cool. So, yeah, leave me some comments, subscribe, you know, friend me, it doesn't really matter, you know, and uh, I'll get back to you guys soon. And uh, check out those links, you know, they can be really helpful. They can really take your Final Cut Pro editing to the next level if you want to get there. So, uh, I'll talk to you all later. Peace.